The galaxy's scruffiest-looking nerf herder finally got a film all to himself, with Solo a Star Wars story. And as far as all-out action-filled heist movies go, it's out of this world. Taking place about a decade before Han would meet Luke and his crew in a dingy little cantina on Tatooine, Solo gives us a pretty clear backstory about the troubled, optimistic Han. Despite the hero's general detachment and disenchantment from all things Jedi, it's hard to escape common threads dangling throughout the Star Wars universe. From name-checked bounty hunters to familiar face masks, here are a few details you may have missed in Solo. Stay Golden You'd be blind to not notice Han's gold dice in Solo, but they have a very confusing history, and even canonical Star Wars publications can't seem to agree on what their deal is. From their first on-screen appearance during A New Hope, the dice have taken on a life of their own. Star Wars The Force Awakens, a visual dictionary, includes a picture of the dice. They have standard pips, and they were allegedly used in a game of Sabacc in which Han won the Falcon from Lando Calrissian. When they make their reappearance in The Last Jedi, their symbols have changed to alien characters. In Solo, Han hands the dice to Kira, before they're separated on Corellia. The dice are returned to him just before the crew of the Falcon enter the spice mines of Kessel, but they definitely aren't used during Han's Sabacc showdown with the cheating Calrissian. They're not even used during Han and Lando's rematch in which Han actually scores the iconic ship. So like so much of Star Wars lore, we're going to have to dig just a little deeper and figure out the real story behind those Corellian chance cubes. Questions about Kessel Finally, we get to see what makes the Kessel Run so dangerous, and why it's such a big deal that Han Solo made it in less than 12 parsecs, setting to rest the ongoing debate about a parsec being a unit of distance, not time. Because of the fancy flying necessary to make it through the extremely dangerous area of space, finding a viable shortcut and surviving it is a truly big deal. Most viewers remember Kessel because of Han's boasting. The average run takes 20 parsecs, but the Falcon made it in 12. That is, if you round down. By the time A New Hope rolls around, Han story grows and that number dips to under 12. During The Force Awakens, Rey believes the number to be 14 parsecs, which Han quickly corrects. But that's not even the first time Kessel is mentioned in Star Wars. The first mention occurs in the first five minutes of A New Hope. What are we going to do? We'll be sent to the spice mines of Kessel. In Solo, we see that Kessel totally sucks. Even though L337 staged a pretty successful robot rebellion in the mines, Star Wars Rebels The Visual Guide confirms that the mines have regular rebellions, all of which seem to be more or less unsuccessful. Even a decade later, Kessel still sucks. Big Bounty of all the lives lost in Solo, the definitive end to a fan-favorite bounty hunter was perhaps the most surprising, and it didn't even happen on screen. Ara Singh, who made a brief appearance in The Phantom Menace, went on to appear in both canonical Star Wars comics and multiple episodes of The Clone Wars, where she hung out with Boba Fett and Cad Bane and even faced down Jedi warriors Ahsoka Tano and Plo Koon. And then, sometime later, she was pushed by Tobias Beckett and met her unceremonious end. That's it. For a once-respected bounty hunter, what a way to go. Also mentioned in passing is Bosk, the lizard-like bounty hunter who first appears in The Empire Strikes Back. Diving even deeper into Star Wars lore, the Zan sisters are also mentioned at the same time as Bosk. While not an obvious riff on Star Wars Legends continuity, Zan and Zoo Pike were a pair of mercenary sisters who first appeared in Shadows of the Empire. If there's any doubt about their connection, consider Teros Kasi, the martial art mentioned by Kira, which is employed by her, Boss, and Darth Maul, among others. It's first mentioned in Shadows, is used by the Pikes sisters, shows up in the title of a terrible video game, and is never mentioned in canon again until now. Legends Even though Disney threw out pretty much every Star Wars comic and book that was written before they acquired Lucasfilm, much of the new canon continuity of Star Wars is more or less a remix of the old stuff. At one point in Han's original wiped-out history, he joined the Empire, didn't fit in, and eventually saved Chewbacca from the Empire's abuse. Sound familiar? <laughs> That's yes. The Maw also exists in old Star Wars lore, but it's a cluster of black holes inside the Kessel Run. The idea is essentially the same in Solo, plus a horrifying space jellyfish for good measure. The parallels to things viewers can find in the discarded history of Star Wars are numerous, but you'll still never, ever see Mara Jade on the big screen. Sorry, guys. Crimson Dawn Dryden Voss, the leader of the crime syndicate Crimson Dawn, is something of a collector. Keen viewers probably noticed a suit of Mandalorian armor hanging around in the background of his office, which is of course similar to the suits worn by the Fets. But it's another curiosity in his office that probably turned even more heads. Director Ron Howard announced before the release of Solo that he'd planted an Indiana Jones Easter egg in the film, carrying on a long tradition of the two franchises' trading references. 
Treasures from the Sankara stones to the fertility idol are hidden throughout the room, but the most obvious treasure is the gigantic crystal skull that Voss has prominently displayed. Voss's skull is definitely more humanoid than the alien cranium found in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but it's almost definitely a reference to the Indiana Jones film. Aboard the Falcon for decades, all we've really known of the Millennium Falcon is that it's a temperamental, hardy little freighter with a weird shape. But you might not have even recognized the ship and Solo. During Han and Lando's first trip, we see that the ship is very clean and also unusually teardrop-shaped, with a whole lot of additions made by Lando himself to make it more of a pleasure vehicle than one for just serious business. These additions include a cape room, a hollow chess table, and some nice sleeping quarters. Interestingly, the shape of the old Falcon actually reflects the original designs of artist Ralph McQuarrie. Despite all the damage by the end of Solo, one thing we know for sure remains aboard the Falcon is Lando's bounty hunter helmet, which we first see in Return of the Jedi when Lando enters Jabba's palace using the name Temtel Screech. Beckett uses the same helmet to disguise himself on Kessel. Digging Deep Lando clearly isn't a fan of mining colonies, but by the time The Empire Strikes Back rolls around, Calrissian is managing Cloud City, a Tabana gas mining colony over Bespin. Keep your eyes peeled on the Falcon and you'll spot a silver model of the colony among Lando's possessions. Speaking of clouds, it may also come as a surprise that Enfys Nest and her cloud riders actually aren't a completely original creation for Solo. They're actually inspired by a band of marauders who appeared in 1978's Star Wars No. 9, but only in appearance. The comic Cloud Riders are led by a guy with the terrible name Arrogantis, who definitely isn't into piracy to help the rebellion. By then, Marvel's Star Wars comics were already far off the rails. Jabba the Hutt was a skinny yellow walrus on two legs, while Han was hanging out with a hedgehog man named Hedgy and a barely clothed crime boss lady named Amaza. No thanks. Weasel and Company Solo doesn't have as many secret cameos as other recent Star Wars films, but a few are worth mentioning. It would be hard to miss the unusual presence of Clint Howard, brother of director Ron Howard, and a regular face for fans of science fiction. You'll spot him as a robot wrangler when we first meet L337. And while you won't find C-3PO, Solo still features the droid's actor, Anthony Daniels, as a human named Tok, who teams up with the Wookiees and Chewbacca during the escape from Kessel. And of course we have Warwick Davis, who's been a part of Star Wars since the very beginning, most notably appearing as Wicket, the Ewok. Of all his Star Wars characters, only one is unmasked. Weasel, a scuzzy spectator at the Boonta Eve pod race during The Phantom Menace. Davis appears again in Solo as a member of the Cloud Riders, and once again he's playing Weasel. Going from a racing junkie on a dirt planet to being one of the galaxy's founding freedom fighters is an arc to parallel anyone else in Star Wars, and it's an arc we'd love to see. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.